In our previous presentation, we understood what is the difference between decidable and undecidable problems. Now in this lecture, we will understand the nature of undecidable problems. Let's get started with this lecture and let's see what are the topics. The topic of this lecture is the nature of undecidable problems. In this lecture, we will understand the nature of undecidable problems through an example. The example helps us understand why undecidable problems are called undecidable. Let's get started and let's understand this with the help of an example. Let's assume that the size of the input is 100 and we want to feed this input to an algorithm which takes 2 to the power of n time. Here n represents the size of the input. So, input is provided to this algorithm of size 100 and this algorithm takes 2 to the power of n time. Now, we want to know how much time it takes to terminate. This means how much time this algorithm takes to execute. We want to know the exact time, not 2 to the power of n. How do we calculate this? First, we need to know the number of instructions executed by this algorithm. Let us assume that the number of instructions is equal to 2 to the power of n. So, the number of instructions is equal to 2 to the power of 100 because n is 100. Now we know the number of instructions that needs to be executed. Let's say we have the world's fastest computer and we want to execute this algorithm on that computer to know how much time this algorithm will take. We want to know the exact time. So for this purpose, we need to execute our algorithm on some computer. And let's say we have the world's fastest computer. So, let's execute our algorithm on that computer. And let's calculate the time our algorithm takes. Let's consider the world's fastest computer capable of executing 2 to the power of 20 instructions per second. So, we have this computer and this computer has the capability of executing 2 to the power of 20 instructions per second. In one second, it can execute 2 to the power of 20 instructions. Now, let's calculate in one year how many instructions our computer is capable of executing. In one year, the computer, which is the world's fastest computer, can execute 2 to the power of 20 into 60 into 60 into 24 into 365. 60 into 60 into 24 into 365 represents the number of seconds in one year. And in one second, we already know that our computer is capable of executing 2 to the power of 20 instructions. By multiplying 2 to the power 20 by 60 into 60 into 24 into 365, we will get the number of instructions that our computer is capable of executing in one year. In order to simplify the calculation, let's represent these numbers in 2 to the powers. Let's say that this number is 64 instead of 60. So, this can be represented as 2 to the power of 6 because 64 is near to 60. Similarly, this can also be represented as 2 to the power 6. Let's replace this 24 by 32 because 32 is nearest to 24. And 32 can be represented in 2 to the power of x. What is x? x is 5 because 2 to the power of 5 is 32. So, in place of 24, we can write 2 to the power 5. What about 365? 256 is near to 365 compared to 512. And 256 can be represented as 2 to the power of 8. So, let's say this is 2 to the power 8. So, how do we represent this expression? This expression can be represented as 2 to the power of 20 into 2 to the power 6 into 2 to the power 6 into 2 to the power 5 into 2 to the power 8. Now, let's do the calculation. Let's multiply these values so as to get the final value. After multiplication, we will get nearly 
टू टू द पावर ऑफ फोर्टी फाइव इंस्ट्रक्शन दिस मीन्स इन वन ईयर द वर्ल्ड फास्टेस्ट कंप्यूटर कैन एग्जीक्यूट नियरली टू टू द पावर फोर्टी फाइव इंस्ट्रक्शन बट वी वॉन्ट टू नो हाउ मच टाइम द वर्ल्ड फास्टेस्ट कंप्यूटर विल टेक टू एग्जीक्यूट टू टू द पावर ऑफ हंड्रेड इंस्ट्रक्शन Now let's get back to our previous slide to do the calculation. We know the input size is hundred, and our algorithm is taking two to the power hundred instructions to execute. We want to know how much time our world's fastest computer will take to execute two to the power of hundred instructions. We know in one year. 2 to the power 45 instructions will be executed by the world's fastest computer that is what we are assuming in order to execute one instruction it will take 1 by 2 to the power 45 years we are dividing both sides by 2 to the power 45 in order to get one instruction here so one instruction will be executed in 1 by 2 to the power of 45 years then 2 to the power 100 instructions will be executed in 2 to the power 100 divided by 2 to the power 45 years we have multiplied both sides by 2 to the power of 100 in the left hand side we are getting 2 to the power 100 instructions and in the right hand side we are getting 2 to the power 100 Divide by two to the power forty-five years. This is equal to two to the power of fifty-five years. So the world's fastest computer is taking two to the power fifty-five years to execute two to the power hundred instructions, and the amount of time the computer is taking is much more than the age of the universe. Do you know what is the age of the universe? It is nearly thirteen point eight billion years, which is nearly equal to two to the power of thirty three years. And here we are getting two to the power fifty five years, which is much greater than two to the power thirty three years. Hence, the world's fastest computer, which we assumed, is taking time more than the age of the universe. What was the size of the input? Size of the input is just hundred. For this size, there are two to the power hundred instructions that needs to be executed, and our computer is taking nearly two to the power fifty-five years to execute two to the power hundred instructions. Clearly, this algorithm is inefficient. and the problem it is solving is undecidable why am i saying the problem it is solving is undecidable the reason is that no one can decide the output within 2 to the power 55 years of this algorithm that is why the problem this algorithm is solving is undecidable I have mentioned in the last lecture that the algorithm which takes exponential time is inefficient and the problem it solves is undecidable and now from this example I hope it is clear why these type of algorithms are inefficient and why the problems they are solving are undecidable so with this we understood the nature of undecidable problems undecidable problems are those problems for which no efficient algorithm exists so with this we learned the nature of undecidable problems and this means we are done with this lecture okay friends this is it for now thank you for watching this presentation i will see you in the next one